All right, folks, well, good evening. Thanks for coming out. Nice evening. It's always a nice evening with Bob Wright. Uh, and being able to talk and see and, and have an opportunity to uh, learn information about your great new city, where we're going, where we've been, what's uh, going to happen. And that's, that's really what this forum is uh, this evening. And um, this is about continuing to inform you all of where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, there's some historical pieces to this uh, this evening. Um, because I think it's imperative that you find out the entire history of Stonecrest because you'll be surprised, some of you will, some of you won't, that I meet people uh, in Staple, in Wakefields, or at the mall, wherever I am, clothes most of the time, and say, oh, I, I didn't know Stonecrest was a city. Oh boy. <laughs> and we, 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 <laughs> we have some more communicating to do if that's the case. Um, neither right or wrong, just more work uh, to be done at this point. However, uh, to start, I would like to um, begin by recognizing my council folks. I saw uh, Councilman Rob Turner. All right. <laughs> Councilman Joyce Turner. <laughs> and Councilman Jimmy Gladden. <laughs> During these, uh, uh, if, you, if you come to city council meeting, uh, I have to pause when I try to figure out which turn I'm going to call on at that point. <laughs> and uh, 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 thank you all for being here. Uh, three great men, three great mentors that you would have to know how close we are to do uh, some of the things that we have uh, been doing. Also, um, I like to recognize my uh, city staff this year, assistant city manager and our city manager, Mr. Blaise Joyner and Mr. Michael Harris. <laughs> and of course, our illustrious communications director, uh, Ms. Ed Bell. Uh, anybody else here from city staff? Okay. I thought I saw Representative Doreen Carr. Oh, there she is. The Representative Carr. Uh, uh, Representative Carter uh, does the real heavy lifting down at the uh, state capitol, so we we appreciate that. Um, thank you so much, you know, for what you do. Have, is, have I recognized all elected officials, all staff? All right, very good. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to take you through uh, a journey, a path, as to how the city came about. Um, how it got started, what was the motivation behind it, uh, where we moved to from that once we became a city, and then where we're going in the future. And at that point in time, uh, you can, let's say then you can make up your mind with regards to where we should be. Um, well, if you guys have touched it in the beginning, thank you. You said you can do the arrow card. Yes, I'm taking the challenge. That's, that's, let's get that out of the way right now. <laughs> um, so, let me start by recognizing some people that um, absolutely started and built the foundation of Stonecrest City Alliance. Stonecrest City Alliance was the first entity um, uh, that was created to be able to um, form the city of Stonecrest. And I want to recognize these people individually because uh, they were and are the core of where we are. There is no one person that does anything. There is no one person that achieves what we've done so far. So it is a group of people. So uh, I want to start by recognizing Ms. Michelle Emanuel. She's over here. Um, we knew we had to have a, the, a, a solid business person in our community when we set this board up. And Ms. Michelle Emanuel is a, 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 a super solid business person that has done very well here in Stonecrest. Uh, beside her um, is, is two is, is two queens over here. <laughs> uh, Miss Stacy Thibodeau, she was a part of Stonecrest, yes. Also, um, the first lady, Miss Deborah Larry. Uh, uh, with Miss Thibodeau, uh, we, we knew we had to have a person that could concentrate um, uh, on community. 
community that was in this area, and uh, Mrs. Larry uh, had an education and an extensive education background. Also in front of them is um, Mr. Sean Jones. <laughs> Everything that you have seen, IT-wise, web-wise, anything to do with regards to this city, that man created it right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and Sean, we just, we just could not have done it without you on that part. So I'm gonna, I'm going to reach back this way, and if I leave out anybody, do not feel shy to raise your hand, and I will recognize you uh, just as sure as we stand here. This next person is flat out, he's a daddy of stone breast. Uh, everybody knows it, if you don't know, you're gonna know it now, and that's Mr. Tom Curry. Tom Curry, great. Now, I would call him the daddy of stone breast. Tom wrote the charter, Tom helped usher us through the uh, General Assembly. Uh, you would be surprised at how much work um, uh, Mr. Curry and Representative Carter have to do to control to make things happen with regards to where you're going in the General Assembly uh, itself. And uh, uh, not only being a personal mentor of mine, he also worked his way through the Governor's Commission. He was the uh, attorney for the Governor's Commission. And the only thing that that uh, Mr. Curry wanted from us since day one. He said this, I just want an opportunity to compete for the business. He never, we never guaranteed him anything. We never did anything but allow him to compete for the business and he won the business fair and square. And we appreciate that, Attorney Curry. Um, next, let's see. Oh, we, uh, speaking of which, with regards to the Governor's Commission, um, I see our uh, a city judge, as a matter of fact. Mr. Michael Sheridan, who also sat on the Governor's Commission uh, with regards to code enforcement. <laughs> Some other key people. And it's important, folks, that we recognize these folks because you need to know how this came about. You need to know how this was formed into uh, where we are today. Um, a couple of very key folks. One is this individual was a mayor and a council person twice. And that is, uh, oh, I still call him the mayor, the mayor of Stonecrest, Mr. Darrell Honoré. Uh, we had no idea how to set up a city. We had no idea what really happened with regards to those particular operations. However, I have been attending uh, city council meetings uh, for 12, maybe 15 years, you know, watching how the soup and sausage was made until we had an opportunity here uh, in Stonecrest. I saw Tony Renner. Oh, there he is. The King of Kings, folks. He's sitting right here in the back of the corner here. Uh, our other piece, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Renner uh, was on our initial board. Folks, we're talking 2013 now. Is that we knew sooner or later, uh, with this day has now come, we had to have somebody that knew something about public safety. And uh, he, he is an expert in that arena. Uh, he started with us on this end and worked this whole particular time with him. One other person, uh, and that is Mr. Al Franklin sitting right here. Raise your hand, Ms. Franklin. Three-time councilman for the city of Lithonia. Also um, uh, put together the Development Authority Council on Development uh, uh, Authority for the city. Again, folks, the reason I bring these people up is because this was the start, this was the foundation, this was 2013 as to uh, where we began our journey with regards to the city of Stonecrest. And quite frankly, when folks work, and they work that hard, and they work that hard for free, you're supposed to recognize it. I mean, because they did this for all of us. And uh, I wanted to, uh, to take that moment to make sure uh, that that happened. Am I, am, I, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> uh, is Bernard Knight here? He is caught in traffic somewhere. I promise you, he will walk in here sooner or later. Uh, he was another uh, key person uh, with regards to where we were at this time. All right, so we'll start from here. So the Don Stonecrest started with a great idea. And that was it. It really started with an idea. And what happened, uh, I was in leadership class, class of 2012. And it was government day. And on government day, uh, they took us to, to um, um, downtown Decatur and they started talking about what their plans were with regards to what was going to happen in the cab. 
And they didn't mention one thing that was going to happen in Southeast Decatur. They didn't mention one thing that was going to happen with regards to where we were and what progress we were going to make here. So I made up my mind from there that I was going to investigate how to become our own city because I watched Dunwoody, I watched these other places come out of the ground and how well they did from there. So um, being a B student that I am, uh, it was up to me at that point to do my own investigation and start learning from there. And that's how we got started with it. So we always thought and still do, you know, a great place to live, work, play, worship, shop, educate. These six things, uh, folks, will happen throughout any place, any time, any space in history. If you do these six things, you can become a competent community where you live, you work, you play, you worship, you shop, and you educate your children. And this is from, from Macon, Georgia to Bangladesh. It happens the same way. So if you look around yourselves, and you were thinking back in 2013, do you think we have the same components here where we can live, work, and play, and shop, and worship, and educate our children? I can promise you that was the case. As a matter of fact, this person is not here, but I want to I give her credit for, for um, catching my attention on this. And this was Mrs. Vicki Turner, who I didn't know from Adam House Camp. And she came up to me and she said, let me tell you something, Mr. Laird, this is before I ran or was anything else. The city was just on everything. If you don't find something to do with combining education with this city initiative, it is going to fall and it is going to fall hard. And that stayed with me at that particular time. And um, it stayed with me for today. And to, 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 to be proof of that, you'll see some other things that we'll talk about. And that's why we made one of those six pillars education. Um, and I've uh, gotten an opportunity to know, of course, her and her uh, husband, Rob Turner, um, you know, fairly well. And, I mean, uh, it, it's gone very well from there. So this was the cornerstone of how we started. So, Three years of legislative and community action. Folks, that was three and a half years of walking neighborhoods, three and a half years of doing presentations, three and a half years or so being able to talk one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, five on one with people, whatever the situation was. And every time uh, we had a meeting or so, we picked up other group members. <laughs> There we go. I lean on. Uh, another another key group member that we picked up over over time uh, was Mr. Joel Taylor, who was also the chair of the Governance Commission. And being able to um, I know a person that knew solid public finance. I want you to hear those words. Solid public finance, because of the difference between your individual checkbook and then public finance. He made a real difference and he came along with us, you know, for the journey, of course. Two feasibility CDI studies. $30,000 each. Now, um, this was in 2013. We raised the money to begin to raise that first round of money to get our study. And the first part of this, not the first part of it, but the first study failed, period. So we were looking at 82,000 people um, and then you know, right, off the, right off the bat having police services, parks and rec, code enforcement. So that number was 33 million in revenue, 38 million uh, in debt. So it was upside down. Um, and the landmass between how large your city is compared to the services that are being covered, it didn't match. So that study failed. Went to the general legislature. That study didn't make it through there. It took me off the table. Now, quite frankly, at the point in time, uh, I'll use Mr. Curry as an example, Attorney Curry as an example, um, we could put I said, this is too hard. People are fussing at me every day. They don't understand where we're going. This is too much to take on. You know, we're, we're walking the soles off our shoes, going to neighborhood and neighborhood, trying to prove to everyone we can take care of ourselves. We can handle our own business. But folks, I'm just not built that way. So we didn't stop. And we moved on to the next level to raise the second round of money. Because this time, two key things happened to make Stonecrest palatable to where we are today. One is that we had to reduce our footprint from 82,000 people to 50,000 change, even though it's 53 now. But since this track, that's where it was between 50 and 53,000. That was the first thing. So we moved from 60 
square miles to 29 square miles. And let me tell you, I'll show you on the map as we move forward. Um, there were some upset people that got left out of, 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 of the second round of camp because they really wanted to be in stone The <coughs> best point of the night is that it reduced the revenue uh, with regards to expenses. So then we decided that, okay, um, this county did their own study, but we had to have a second study that included code enforcement, uh, planning and zoning, and parks and rec. And then we would take on the model that if we could afford police at the time, then we would move. That's how that second study passed. Right parameters, right size. 60 plus public forms that we talked about, HOA meetings, two general assembly study committees that we had to go in front of, uh, the Cab County sponsored impact study. The Cab County sponsored impact study said that look, based on what we see, based on your footprint, it would be advantageous if you can understand the words that are coming out of my mouth from the Cab County themselves. It would be advantageous if Stonecrest created their own city. A lot of people really didn't know that. One in that regional commission ARC study with the Regional <coughs> Cities Initiative, a House vote and two city votes, one signature of, of, of Governor Nathan Deal. That was no small order, folks. I can promise you that. Uh, one referendum vote in November of 16, and then the election of our mayor and five city council persons. So what do we mean by live, work, play, worship, shop, educate quickly? You live in a nice neighborhood just like everybody else. We're no different than anyone else um, that's around in this area. Uh, work, this is why it's highlighted in red. Very few highways opportunities for residents in this area. We wanted to build that commerce here to make it happen. Uh, play at Radio Mountain National Heritage Area, and we have boundless green space. We have that couple. Worship, <laughs> we got more churches in France, and then two square miles. So you can, put, you can worship anywhere that you like to uh, in this area. Shop, this is the arm wrestling match. Because I can't base shop on Jason Larry. Because I just go to Lowe's. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. But, uh, with people that live, work, play, and shop here, shop is a big piece. Shop is, a, is an opportunity where you actually develop um, what you have with regards to your economic development. And of course, educate, um, you know, working with Cab County uh, for creative and improvement solutions. As a matter of fact, um, uh, myself, uh, school board member Vicki Turner, uh, is, this, is Dr. Barbara Lee, is she, is she in here? Um, she's not. Um, we've already put together some opportunities um, so that we go direct with the school system to be able to help with regards to where we can go to from there. Um, understanding there's only so much that we can do with regards to that area. So the incorporation of Stonecrest is vital. Quite frankly, to protect and enhance our standard of living here uh, with regards to local zoning decision and more responsive code enforcement. I don't know if you've had this experience yet or not, folks, but you call our guys here at Stonecrest, they come out and they come out fast. You're not waiting three, four weeks, months for something to happen. We are one of the best departments that I've seen ever with regards to code enforcement, and it's joining right now. So uh, to improve the commercial hub of the Mall of Stonecrest, and dramatically the areas increase our area tax base. So let me pause here for a moment, folks, because I want you to understand why, why was the city of Stonecrest created and the big part and the big push behind it? It is simply put, folks, economic development for this area. All I saw was folks concentrating on Central Decal, North Decal. All the money went to Central Decal, went to North Decal. How is it that with the abundance of available land, interstate infrastructure, none of the real businesses came here? They would rather go and put one person every square inch to make the investment here in Southeast Decal because we didn't focus on it. We didn't demand quality. We didn't demand world class, but we're demanding it now. So I want you to keep in mind the whole premise here of developing the city of Stonecrest, its foundation is economic development. You know, money doesn't solve every problem. I'll be the first to tell you that, but it'll solve every problem I have right now. That I know for sure. So having said that, a job fixes most problems. You know, really 90% of the people want to work. But do they have the opportunity? Do they have the skill set? Do they have the education base? Do they have the chance to go out and actually make a living for themselves? Um, Mr. Bell and I work in the Cab County Jail. 
Most of those guys that we saw wanted to work. Most of those people didn't want to be in trouble. Now, you got a few that, that was career bubbleheads, but most of the people that we saw, particularly African-American men, wanted to work somewhere. And that is a, that, that is a true fact and statement. So that's the building of Stonecrest is about economic development. The building of Stonecrest is about creating commerce. So we attract high quality and innovative businesses to the Latonia Industrial Park, which now will be the Stonecrest Industrial Park. Folks, what is happening now, what we found out from 2013 to now, industry is coming back on shore. It's no longer palatable for, um, quite frankly, uh, uh, overseas companies to build um, light manufacturing widgets and those particular pieces and then ship them abroad. If you go to Union City, if you go down near that area, if you go to some of these places in, in Covington and, and some other folks, watch what is exploding with regards to light manufacturing. We have 4,500 um, square acres that we can offer with regards to light manufacturing for, as a matter of fact, we had a call the other day for a 100 acre solar windmill farm. People are now looking at us for um, uh, clean energy and those particular things that no one ever paid any attention to what was happening in the industrial park before. And now we have an opportunity to be able to make that happen. Uh, and to create that economic engine to generate more commercial and industrial growth here in the Stonecrest Corridor uh, and provide an environment that fosters the cooperative of um, uh, engagement to be able to make that happen and develop tourism. So I'm going to give you a 30 second story about public-private partnerships. Understand something, folks. We are a new city. We Not only are we a new city, we are a new breed of city. And what I mean by that, these corporate cities now that are, that are being developed, like Stonecrest, they're built for business. Very specific example. Uh, for those of you that have been around, do you remember Black Omni concerts? Do you remember when the amphitheater was uh, just on and popping, if I may use the term, every weekend with some of the major acts in the world coming by, that's a public-private partnership. And what happens is that the private person entity, Jason Larry at that time and Deborah Larry, put up the money in a public facility so that those two can both win together. And we did that particular public-private partnership for years until politics got involved with it and killed it. And they can do that. You have to, one thing that I found out, folks, and you all that are sitting in the audience, you cannot conquer a people. I cannot drag you into prosperity kicking and screaming. You have to want to come along. You have to want to be a part of it. And one, one of my favorite books is that, you know, taking people with you. That's the name of the book, taking people with you. It's not a matter of leading people. It's a matter of taking people with you those that are want to go in the same area. Because many times people will ask, well, why do you just combine with Latonia? Why do you just do this with Latonia? Well, you couldn't combine it with Latonia because they have to have the desire to want to annex. They have to have the desire to want to build business. They have to have that desire and political will to make things happen for themselves. And they were not on the same page with that. So what do we do at this point? And here, I got some really good friends sitting in the audience that were council persons and mayor. We had to go do something different. There's nothing bad or different about it. There's nothing good or bad about that. It's just different. You move into another area. So again, basically you know, on this area. So the city of Stonecrest, we said no tax increase guaranteed. Look at your bill, 2017. You will see the same zero on your bill that I saw on mine. There was no duplication of uh, things that we've heard talked about is you're going to double tax this. We're going to have double tax for this. It's going to be double tax for that. This couldn't work because you didn't have a proper plan. All of that was proven wrong. All you have to do is look at your tax bill and I got one I'm going to show you here today. <coughs> Increased public safety. As we went around to these places to find out what was important to you What was important? People said, you know, I don't want my cars broken into anymore. I don't want to fear going to the mall. I don't want to be outside and somebody's going to hit me over the head in, 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 you know, in the middle of the daytime. So a big focus of what we concentrated on, and fortunate for us, is the advent of public safety. And now, since we have an opportunity with SPLOS, and we'll talk about that in a, a, a few moments here, we have the opportunity to increase and bolster and create 
our own public safety department. So we talked about uh, those bills. Look here, in the beginning here, that's, uh, 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 if you take a look at this, is unincorporated. Unincorporated? Village rate. State and taxes and charges. That was brought before we ended up actually being a city. This is an unincorporated portion of uh, the Cab County with regards to uh, 2015 tax in this area. But you can see separated, um, I'm not just telling you anything else you, you don't know, your county government taxes with regards to what was unincorporated or not, uh, your state taxes, and then we talk about the military. rate. Then, here is the city of Lafonia. In the city of Lafonia, you'll see city taxes. This one right here, city taxes. Those city taxes took the place of unincorporated taxes. There was never, you would never pay both. You wouldn't pay an unincorporated tax and a city tax. My wife and I do this because we own property in the both areas, unincorporated and in the city. Plus, the many meetings that I had uh, with the tax commissioner in the county. Now look what happened in 2017. Your own tax bill. Zero. Goose egg. You did not get an extra tax from Stonecrest. This is the point you should clap. <laughs> Just a little bit if you don't mind. This is a good thing. Zero. Because we said it wouldn't be and it is not. A lot up here, fair and dry. So we kept our promise to that enough because we knew what we were talking about based on the studies that were coming through. Call this a study. You can find that online. So they're still on the uh, they're still on our site. Yeah. All right, 2000, you can, you can go through very, very specific about what was happening. Let me tell you something, folks. When you pay 30000 twice for a study, you get to know that study really well, really well. You start looking at it very close then. So, in the General Assembly, uh, Ms. Carter can tell you this, Representative Carter can tell you this, they, they, they only accept two studies before the General Assembly called Vincent Institute and the uh, Andrew Young School of Public Policy. Uh, we, decided, we decided to use University of Florida uh, called Vincent Institute. And I talked earlier about uh, 60 square miles with 83,000 residents. It surrounded, as a matter of fact, it surrounded the city of Lithonia. Uh, encompassing it, as a matter of fact. Uh, no one was really crazy about that idea, uh, but that was part of it at the time. Um, and um, it just didn't create enough revenue support for all the things that we wanted to do, so the study failed. We reduced the footprint, as I mentioned earlier, 29 square miles, uh, and the number of residents to 52,000, now it's 53, and selected a different mix of city services that we could control. Here's what was happening in the meantime and at the same place. Splos was going to be introduced and passed before we became a city. Uh, and we got blessed and lucky at the same time. So how did that, that something happened in the language of the bill that delayed it a year, which gave us an opportunity to pass and become a city. Otherwise, that $7.5 million a year now that we have, that we wouldn't have before, would have went to the county for doing something else. <laughs> All right, so feasibility study number one. If you see the pink area, that's where we are today. That's 53, 52, 53,000, well, that's a 53,000 uh, based on, uh, on, on census. If you look in the blue, that was the original city boundaries with all those combined, which would be 80, 82,000 folks. So here, this is way up Rock Chapel, way down 124, way in this area here, beside South Deshaun, uh, uh, on the edges of uh, uh, Pleasant Hill, I mean, it was it was big. Also, the second issue that it encompassed the city of Lithonia. It just absolutely engulfed them. People were not crazy about that. They said, you're going to choke off that town if they want to grow in the future. Understand that point. Over here, Chapel Hill Elementary, Flash Hill Parkway, um, uh, Brownsville Fire Station, this is big. This whole piece was 
83,000 folks, 60 square miles. Uh, so this is the one that failed in 2014. Now, the reason I spent a little bit of time on this is that these are the folks, unfortunately, these are the homes and some businesses that's in blue, they got cut off. It's like the Titanic. Do you continue to play while the ship is going out, or do you get on a lifeboat? And do make some very difficult decisions. Not that I made by myself, of course. And those neighborhoods are upset to this day. And they still want to come in. So, to be able to make that happen, and I always go back to Representative Carter because that's the person that uh, is doing the heavy lifting for us. We would have to take in 10,000 people at a time. So we move from 63,000, 73,000. Um, control growth if approved by the general legislature. We decided not to do that this year because we had some other heavy lifting that we wanted to accomplish at this particular time. We wanted to give you a background on where we are. This is the actual study that passed, 2015. This is what we look like today, where our borders are in 20 and everything else. So three city services with regards to where we are. Uh, the selected will have the greatest effect on our economic development here for us and the standard of living in Stonecrest. Zoning, local control over your residential, commercial, and industrial construction and growth. Code enforcement. When we say vigorous, I mean vigorous oversight um, and control of the Stonecrest brand. And that's where we're headed and that's what we're doing, a specific Stonecrest brand. And of course, parks and recreation to promote tourism and healthy living. Um, you know, for Stonecrest. Um, our charter provides for the implementation of additional services, such as public safety. And we're gonna be able to make that decision that's coming up. As a matter of fact, uh, with the, the proposal that uh, passed with regards to SLOS, that decision pretty much has been made. And they will move carefully and move forward with regards to being able to deliver those services. But the folks I have to tell you, the backbone, absolute backbone of being able to garner business <coughs> is your local control over uh, your zoning, particularly in the industrial, commercial, um, and construction growth. We have an opportunity to grow that area uh, with businesses for light manufacturing and and and, um, and we'll talk a little bit about Amazon too, to be able to bring in revenue. Here's the thing that I want you all to collectively understand folks, um, your most important component of this, period. You're the taxpayer. You're the most important component. However, you're not the only component because people in this commercial area, they pay taxes too. The people in the industrial area, they pay taxes also. Even though you all get the vote and get to say where uh, those things happen, they are also putting in money too. The mix, what makes us successful here in Stonecrest is that we have the right complement of revenue, right complement of mix between commercial, residential, and industrial. You can't leave out any one of those uh, uh, three pieces there. So the story behind Stonecrest initial budget. The initial budget was developed using, as we talked about, uh, the Carl Vincent Institute's uh, feasibility study estimate for values based on uh, comparables, uh, comparable cities, which was Smyrna, and Peachtree Corners, they were comparable in size um, with regards to uh, uh, the old city of Stonecrest and uh, most of the new cities use the CBI estimates. Uh, then the call business feasibility study estimated that the city of Stonecrest would operate with a 20% surplus. 20% surplus. Nine million change with regards to revenue, seven million change with regards to expenses, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, to be considered uh, the implementation of uh, key components of a five-year plan in the Stonecrest LCI study. Someone once asked me, well, has an has implementation plan or study been done here? It has. And LCI study was done several years ago with a 25-year plan. Now, what we have to do is to alter that so that it matches what we want to do in Stonecrest, what our goals are here in Stonecrest. Then through October 2017, the CBI study estimated the city of Stonecrest has been quite accurate. Matter of fact, it's been very accurate with regards to what the study said that we would have and bring in, and compared to what we were spending, we are right on track. So let's talk about it here. 
revenue with regards to the CBI study that was uh, uh, based on the annual budget. This is on an annual budget. Look on this side here when you say insurance premium taxes, $2.5 million is the revenue that's being collected. If you look at your franchise fees, for $3.8 million. But your total estimate here with regards to uh, um, uh, your total budget with regards to uh, the money that you collect is $9 million, almost $10 million. Look at the smallest portion of money that's collected with regards to run the city. Your property taxes. It is the smallest portion of money collected to run a town. So when people say, you're going to raise my taxes, which we did not, we would have to raise them 50-fold to be able to make a difference. Look at the top here. Personal property taxes. $23,000. The big hit, the big piece, was revenue only collected by cities. This is the point that I want to make to us, folks. The reason that we're successful, the reason that the numbers work, is that the county could not collect these taxes. The county could not collect this type of revenue, these type of fees, I say taxes, but actually uh, premium taxes and franchise fees. They couldn't do it. Only cities could. And that's where the difference is. So 85% of the city's revenue uh, from predictable and reliable sources, which is franchise, franchise fees, business licenses and fees, for 2017 and insurance premium taxes that we won't even get a chance to collect in 2019 and we're still doing just fine. But if you look at your pot, look at what we have here with regards to collecting revenue. The big piece, franchise fees, 39%. Insurance premium taxes, 26%. Real property taxes, 1%. But it causes 90% of the headache, 90% of the angst. Oh, you're gonna raise my property tax. Oh, you're gonna. One percent. Nothing. Block grants at nine percent. Even the hotel motel fees is bigger than what you would pay in property taxes. But if you don't know, you don't know. But now you know. <laughs> so. Build your opportunity, build your argument, build what you want to say based on facts, not based on what somebody else is telling you. Find out for yourself. I mentioned earlier that I'm a B student. I am. Matter of fact, B minus student. So that means I have to have reinforcement, Dr. Nancy. I gotta make sure I understand it three, four, five times, Daryl, before it soaks in. It has soaked in. I know exactly where we're going and what we are doing. <coughs> because I studied it. I made sure that I knew what I was talking about so I wouldn't inhale an array of bricks <laughs> this second time around. Because I know what we're talking about in this arena. And I am watching it work every day as man. I watch it work the best way it can. Very proud of the folks that are doing the work for, for us. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mayor and city council calculated for a full-time mayor. We knew all along this was going to be a full-time job. We knew all along it was going to take a full-time effort to go out and wrangle business, to make sure that we were doing the right things, to meet with people 24-7, to go to the grocery store, to go to three church services a Sunday, do whatever it takes with regards to representing our town. We knew this would be a full-time job. Not just Jason Larry. It's the job of the mayor. Forget the person. Take the personality out of it. Take the person out of it. It's the office of the mayor that is required to be full time. We are not done with it. I sat with Dunn. We are not Brookhaven. I watched Tom manage Brookhaven. We're not Johns Creek. We're not Tucker. We're not any of these people. And the reason that we're not any of these people or these cities is that they started 50 leagues ahead of us. They are turning down business. Amazon, go to, go to Stonecrest. We don't need that out here. Too much traffic out here. I almost passed out. <laughs> they even wrote an op-ed in the newspaper that says, look, we support you going to Stonecrest. Go there. Who could turn down that kind of business? I can tell you some people that can turn down that kind of business. It already has too much traffic to start with. It already has too much commerce in their area to start with. 
They want to enjoy the level of living that they have today. But I'm telling you folks, I will be more than happy to take that business from them coming this way. I'd like to recognize Representative Dr. Sean Kennedy. How are you doing, Representative? All right. Hey, Representative Ken Bennett. How you doing, Representative? So I thought I saw you walk in. There she is. All right. Our, 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 our finance guru, if it stinks, financially, let me tell you, she's going to sniff it out for you and tell you exactly where it's going. <laughs> Glad to have the council on. Um, the reason I want to re recognize these three ladies, these three very good uh, state representatives that we have, because you all don't get a chance to see the heavy lifting that they do that I see. All right, let's just have real talk. They're in a majority white GOP House and Senate, and they still get work done. That uh, by itself should give them a round of applause. <laughs> and we want to thank you for your service. We appreciate that. So let's go back to the elephant in the room. Mayor and City Council. Look at this number. $403,000. We already knew it would take full time. We already knew where we were going in this area. We already knew what type of heavy lifting that this was going to be. And your folks, excuse me, the people that are representing you, let me say this loud and clear, and I'm going to say it 10 times tonight. That person, your executive, your mayor, cannot take his smock off at Home Depot and then run to a meeting at City Hall. That is not going to happen. It wasn't built that way, and it's not going to work that way. You have a full-time executive being able to make things happen. I cannot leave early at the right aid and come over to City Hall and meet someone. It's not Jay Solari. It is Office of the Mayor. And we'll continue with that. Look at administration for what we have with City Manager and City Clerk. People used to say, good Lord of mercy, five and some thousand dollars, I'm going to make that's a department. <laughs> That's what the department is. There's 10 people in that department. But if you don't know, you don't know. Um, is, this study is easy to find. It's out on the site, stonepress.org, stonepresscity.org. The facility leases, community development, uh, your code enforcement, even with everything that we have planned here today, you still is at $7.9 million with a full-time mayor and staff still at a 20% surplus with regards to where we are going and where we have to be. So there are revenue streams that are only available to incorporate in this valley. We talked about that. Millions of dollars that we agreed to, to run now. 85% of the revenue from reliable, predictable sources, business license, franchise fees. You can tell what they are, insurance fees. Uh, the city charter guarantees that there's no property tax increase until we get an opportunity to talk about that and where we need to go. Particularly for stone risk. They estimated 20%, we talked about that, and it was sufficient funding to assess enhanced public safety in 2018. Folks, SPLOS changed our lives. You just don't know it yet. Just don't really fully realize it at this point. So we went from a 9.8% million dollar a year budget Add seven point five million dollars to that. We almost double our uh, 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 operating income. We almost double what we were coming in at with regards to what we needed to do, based on a penny. And seventy plus percent of the folks in the camp county says, "I will pay that penny, and I want the other people that's visiting my area to eat in restaurants and do these things. Make them pay that penny too, and it is now worth it." Let me bring it back home for you. So. What does that mean to you as a taxpayer? What does that mean to you to sitting here? You know, all those roads that they promised to fill that still have potholes? Mm -hmm. We get to take the money directly into our bank and fill the holes direct. Yeah. That's it. That's a we don't have to wait on the check. We don't have to wait on people to do it. We don't have to wonder if it's going to happen or not. We make the priority for us, and then we make it happen for Stonecrest in this area. For focus, that's what's happening. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing too. I should have said this at the beginning, and I appreciate you all's patience. 
I'm going to get louder as this thing goes on. <laughs> uh, but I only want you to see that as my excitement for where we're going. I only want you to see that as this is where I know that's happening with us and the great things that are happening in this area um, and where we're moving forward in the future. Economic development and master plan for the city of Stonecrest was created in 2013, but what we are going to do is to take that master plan and um, um, create, uh, create it specifically for Stonecrest. So there is an economic development master plan for this area, but now we have an opportunity to be able to tailor it to Stonecrest. <coughs> so the Stonecrest LCI study, which was uh, completed in 2000. Uh, 13 and 15 that we talked about, we created an economic development department already. That's what we have here in City Hall. Very, very, very sharp young lady um, uh, by the name of Sabrina Wright is our economic development manager. We did that for two reasons. Mayor and council, we did that for two reasons. One, we knew we had at least one guy that could sell stone press, and he's standing up here. Two, we still needed technical assistance with regards to being able to uh, respond to RFPs, the, to, to fill out the paperwork that's required by the state. That takes a very specific skill. So instead of developing a whole economic development department and spending a quarter million dollars on it with two, you know, two or three people, I doubled as that person, and then we hired a technical person that assists me with regards to where we're going to be able to fill out the paperwork, and it works perfect. So you save yourself, as a city, $100,000 plus dollars just doing that. We ran the Stonecrest Business Corridor, corridor to dra dramatically improve uh, the commercial district. So I just happened to be at uh, North Lake Mall today. I went to North Cab Mall today. I was looking for something specific. They are in a difficult shape. They are in a difficult shape. Look what is happening, and I'll show you some specific things that's happening to your mall here in Stonecrest that we're able to survive the storm. And that's what this is, because this was going down, and it was going down fast. Period. Survive the storm. So what do we mean by survive the storm? We had some opportunities a couple of years ago, and I keep rewinding back to what was happening a couple of years ago, because we just didn't wake up yesterday, and this happened. This has been in the planning with some very smart people, way smarter than I am, for years. But we knew this was coming an opportunity so that the Atlanta sports city will be able to have an opportunity to come out here, um, participate in the mall, buy some land, and then have a destination with regards to soccer. This has been going on for two and a half years. Just didn't show up the other day. They had an opportunity to go to Doraville, they turned it down. I was at the bond ceremony meeting when the folks put their hands in the air and guaranteed their check for it. No one had to tell me about it, I was there. Now, it comes in phases, and they have to turn around and have an investment for it, but you know, I had an opportunity to actually see some things work for us with regards to the mall. Why is this important? What would have happened if Coles would have went out of business and there was no other place to fill it? It would just be a gigantic, ugly, empty box. What has happened now? Those gentlemen in Atlanta Sports City has filled that place with regards to their central headquarters for those particular tournaments that are coming up in 2018, 2019, and beyond. Otherwise, that place would be dead. You agree? Now, thank you. Now, seriously. So, what does that tell you, folks? The face of retail is changing. And this big box stuff, this is out. That's, that's, that's done. But what you can do is survive the storm if you repurpose the building. Folks are already looking at, hmm, what can I do with the Sears building? Because they are not going to let it sit now. Land that used to be <laughs> 200,000 an acre right here on the corner, once this whole thing started with Stonecrest and the city and the mall and everything else, million dollars. People know this is where the value is going to be if we continue on where we are. So we attract quality businesses to Stonecrest Mall. Now this is a pet peeve of mine. I don't know if you guys love this. There has never 
have to be another dollar store invented in my entire life. <laughs> We are not a dollar store community. You won't get another one built here if I'm breathing. Period. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Dollar stores. I lost my place. Oh, here we go. It's just rolling past the glass, just rolling past it. <laughs> so we're going to be a city of action. Hey, please, please, please come out. There's no secret place my dude. Two things that are fact. One is that 
The city of Stonecrest itself has not put one red nickel in this thing. This is not our project. This is an independent project by APD and Atlanta Sports City. But I do help them make presentations. And the reason I help them make presentations is that the major corporations that come here that invest with them that I've seen, the major retailers that want to come here that I've seen, you know, the first thing they ask, I want to talk to the mayor. They want to talk to the mayor. People want to have an opportunity to speak to the folks that are in charge that's in this area. It comes with the office, and I'm proud to represent us on that field. Um, so this Atlanta Sports City side of it, this is Klondike, this is I-20, this is Mall Parkway, here's the Sears, here's the whole building that they now occupy, and these are the soccer fields. Now, if you don't know, let me tell you, I'm an expert at outside events. This is what I do for concerts. I know exactly what happens outside. To build a 15,000 seat stadium, you're going to have to have two pro soccer teams to come here and sign up. They are still interviewing those particular folks. And when I say interviewing, those soccer teams are talking to them, and they're talking to those soccer teams. So this two to five year plan on that, let's see what happens. What I know is realistic is a 5,000 seat area because Emory is already signed up to be in that location and they don't put their brand out lightly. So I know that's coming for a fact. Two, is that they're going to start my last meeting with them, these tournaments in March, April time frame because now they have to move this dirt with regards to where they're going and be able to make the fields um, palatable to play on. So it takes, my understanding from them, 61 days to prepare a field for soccer. And, you know, all intents and purposes, this is what they show me. Here's the other thing, at a glance, 190 acre site, otherwise, when people were first talking about this, here's the choice that we have, folks. Waste high grass, and have soccer. I said waste. Chest high grass. <laughs> Atlanta soccer. I'm willing to take my chances with these people that have stood behind what they said and put their money where their mouth is and being able to move things that happen. It supports 2,000 jobs, 3 million visitors expected annually. Folks, I don't know if you, 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 you've heard of that or feel it or not, but, but soccer is a new football. It is the world sport. And that's why they put soccer instead of football, because all you have to do is watch the news every day where they talk about concussion for kids and all the things that's happening with them. Folks are signing up their kids record number for soccer. Even when you go through hard times. I know I'm the only one up here that's ever been through hard times. No problem. I know I'm the only one. <laughs> you still take your kids to play sports. You find that money. And it is recession proof particularly with that soccer crowd that's here. Atlanta United set an attendance record worldwide, right here in this town. So we have an opportunity to be able to move our city forward as a destination place for soccer. So little Jimmy and Brad and they want to come out here in the van, in the van get out of their van, go eat, come back to the, the tournament center, spend their money, go home. I love to have because that model is working all over the country. But the point that I want to make to you with this is that it didn't cost the city of Stonecrest and you as a resident a nickel. This is somebody else's money that we got an opportunity to ride a good wave on as long as they stay with the course. That's why I get so excited about it. Here we go. Burlington. <laughs> I like Burlington. Especially once I, I, I went in and see what they had. However, I wish it was a micro center, but that's okay. I like Burlington. It's still commerce. Still business is coming to this area. This person here is a genius. I'm telling you now. You guys don't know who this guy is. His name is. This is Miss Allen. This AGI starter factory. Here's a person that took a bar. Yes, he's sitting in the back. Here's the number one guy right here. Uh, Matt Hamilton. How you doing, Matt? All right, good to see you, Matt. Good to see you, Matt.
here it is a startle factor. Here is a person that has taken a bill that has been, how long did this bill sit here? Three, four, five years? There was a motorcycle club and eating and all these type of things. You take this bill, have individuals that invest in our community and build a place that new companies can come in to start up, to make sure they get off the ground properly, to make sure they can find funding. That's how you build businesses in your area. This is me. <laughs> I'm in this lower knocking this building down. <laughs>
And I have no problem standing up here proudly telling you all I invited us to the party. Mm -hmm. I put on a red dress and I got there. If you have a problem with how your mayor is professionally representing you at this point and where we're going, you're in for a long ride. Because <laughs> this is how I do business. I do business deliberately, I do business honestly, and as I have been saying all along, we built this town on business. You ever that Doreen Clark? Someday Doreen want to throw me out of a movie call. <laughs> yeah, today is one of those days. <laughs> well, that's okay. I know Representative Carter is a superior businesswoman, as I am a superior, superior businessman. And if you don't think yourself of that, you're standing in the wrong spot when it's CEO time. Because they're going to look you in the face and give you three seconds to get your act together. And that's all the time you have. And for what we have put up, for what we are doing here, we made the world news. And I'm proud that we made the world news. So we'll give you some very specific about it, and we're going to show you some things. Let me clear up a rumor here, or misunderstand, so that we're all on the same page. Council voted to take part of the land in the industrial park, de-annex it, and then annex it as its own city, Amazon, Georgia. Council and Mayor did not vote to change the name of Stonecrest, Georgia, to Amazon, Georgia. Now, even some of the newscasts had it confused. And we're going to show you that in a second. So that was never the case. The case was to make sure that we had an opportunity to give those people something that no one else either didn't think of it or didn't have the guts to offer. Doesn't matter how it came about. So what we said, let me tell you what we're going to do. Mr. Bezos, man name is Jeff Bezos. We're going to make an eternal brand for you. We're going to have your name live forever. Huh, really now. When you are the richest man in the world, not the second richest man, richer than Bill Gates, he is the richest man on the planet. He does not need your money. But up here, when he wakes up in the morning, what is different? What can you do different to offer this person something so that they can go to the next level with us? We gain, and they gain. We gain greatly if it happens. So, as I mentioned earlier, we were not a part of the, 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 the bid that we could find out with, with regards to where we were going, so we submitted the rent. That's what we did. Two weeks later, they're calling us. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, thank you for putting George on the map. People are paying George attention. Of course they are. <laughs> because if you look at what they propose, and I say they, let's just call it what it is, city of Atlanta. <laughs> Do you know how bad traffic is downtown now? <laughs> And you're going to put 50,000 more jobs in the gulch yeah. by the stadium, along with distribution and manufacturing? Please. You wouldn't get the first truck out of it. <laughs> but what you can do in Stonecrest, even if we didn't get it all, even if we got distribution, even if we got some executive pieces of it, that is a great plan with regards to where we're going today. Let's see what happens. So, this is the piece. Amazon, Georgia. Stonecrest. <laughs> Still Stonecrest. Amazon, Georgia. <laughs> the reason I make this piece like this is because when Mr. Bezos wakes up one day, hopefully in the near future, and says, we hear a lot about this Stonecrest thing in Amazon, Georgia. And that's in the top three that you're taking a look at. Let's go see what's happening at, at uh, let's, go, let's go see what's happening in some place. And they actually come here and they take a tour of the goodness of what they have. And then they come here and it's 4 o'clock and they can actually leave. Uh, they can take a tour down to the industrial park and the land is available to build what they want to build. So what we've done to today, we've made an opportunity so that if they do want to come here, they can. And um, our state representatives said that if that opportunity comes about, they'll give a serious opportunity for us to create that. So, if you haven't seen this, if you want to indulge me for two minutes, I'm going to show it to you. 238 proposals.
will go, but only one will, whistles, but only one will win. Everything from small towns to big cities, they're all vying to be the home of Amazon's second headquarters. It's actually known as HQ2. So why so much interest here? Well, the online retailing giant says the new campus could bring as many as 50,000 jobs to the area, plus billions in investment with numbers like that. It is no surprise so many places across North America are throwing their hat into the ring. So there were a few proposals, we have to say, that really stood out to us here at HLN. Here are five that caught our eye for their creative efforts, shall we say. Coming in at number five, New York City, where we normally broadcast from. Today we're in Atlanta. The city going orange on a number of its buildings, hoping to lower Amazon to the Big Apple. That's one effort. How about number four, though? Kansas City, where the mayor, Sly James, best name ever, bought a thousand items on Amazon for charity, then says he reviewed every single one, quote, quote, a little KC love. At number three, Tucson, Arizona, which sent a giant cactus to CEO Jeff Bezos. Well, that ended up being donated because Amazon doesn't accept gifts. Oh, it wasn't a bribe. Number two, Birmingham, Alabama, installed giant delivery boxes around town and then encouraged residents to post selfies. And then there's Stonecrest, Georgia. It's a city of just over 50,000, which is offering to annex part of its land and rename it Amazon, as in Amazon, Georgia. Their mayor, Jason Larry, joins us now live on the story. Great to have you here, Mr. Mayor. So, pleasure to have you in with us, and we like that you're so close you can be in the studio today. Okay, so I'm Jeff Bezos. I want you to give me your 30-second pitch, why Stonecrest, Georgia? Uh, Mr. Bezos, here's what we have. This is what we offer. We offer an internal brand, brand forever. Name this city, um, uh, Amazon, Georgia, and here's a big piece of it. A couple of things. One, you'll be the first corporate mayor ever in the history of the world. Two, we'll take care of the business for you. Three, you can worry about your continued brand as you build your own post office, your own convention center, your own corporate housing. Four, we have Georgia Tech, Clark Atlanta University. Five, we have the airport, 25 minutes from you. 25 minutes from downtown, six, we have a $200 million sports facility right at Atlanta Sports Center that we can call Amazon Sports City. Amazon Sports, so all this sounds great. So you're actually right. taking a portion of the town of Stonecrest, which is fairly young. You were only incorporated in January, exactly. offering to give it to Amazon, rename that portion of the town, but they still have to bring in and build a lot of stuff. Well, here's the thing. We're going to give you the land, Mr. Bezos. You can build your stuff. We already have the technical talent living right there in town. We have the largest minority base of corporate workers in the world, mm -hmm. from labor to executive. Also, we're supported by our great state of Georgia, of course, of Governor Deal and Lieutenant Governor Cato. All the things that you're looking for, we can do. As a matter of fact, Erica, we're going to eliminate 230 cities to deck. They can't do what we can do. 230 out of 238, you're saying they're out. You're out. Goodbye. What about partners? Look, Atlanta has put it out. You're only 20 miles from Atlanta. That's right. Have the two of you talked about maybe partnering together on this? Because this would be a big win for the area, period. And a big win for the state. So we're going to let the chips fall first. Then we'll take it from there. Why do you think they would go for you? What do you think you have that those other, you say you can narrow it down to put yourself in the top five. What do the others have that you, what do you have that they don't rather? Is it just the name? I think the, the, the biggest piece is a brand forever. Forever, no matter what happens to the company or corporation Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon Georgia stands forever. But what if someone wants to come in and buy it up and rename it? Oh, they got a, a lot of money from the state of Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just can't go through that. <laughs> exactly. And, and nobody else is offering to rename part of their part of their land for this town. Exactly. No one is, is uh, offered to do that. Are you worried at all about what you're biting off here? Because as we point out, you're the mayor of this of this town, exactly. Stone Press, 53,000 people, so not an insignificant number of residents there, but you've only been around since January. So here's the thing. One, I have the best city council on the planet. So all of us agree that this is great for our area, uh, great for us long term. Two, people are thinking about bringing in 50,000 workers. We have people that are ready to work now at the executive level, at the labor level, as we talked about earlier. So it's not a matter of bringing those many people. Right. It's a matter of putting those people to the work that we have today. See, we're offering 345 acres, but we have 40,000 acres. You've got more to give. Got more to give. Now, uh, here's one that might throw you for a little loop. I would like to know, what are your top three things that you normally order from Amazon Prime? Oh, um, actually, Amazon Stick. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the wheelbase they have with regards to the model cars that I have for my uh, kids. Ah. See? I like that one. Uh, and two, I personally like Whole Foods. Oh, so, well then that's a win for you right there. Exactly. We're waiting for them to come there also. Well, okay. We get Whole Foods 
Georgia, next door to Amazon Georgia. Exactly. We'll be right <laughs> management administration, code enforcement, 
on building fishermen inspectors, city planner, and land development. These are the bare bones of our city to make this work. Didn't raise your tax dollar one dime to get it here. Community, commerce, and culture working together as a world-class city. That's the only thing you have to make up your mind with, folks. Do you want to be world-class? Or do you want to be stuck in the hole? There's no middle ground. World-class, stuck in the hole. World-class, stuck in the hole. See, I've been stuck in the hole before. I know what the hole looks like. And I don't like it. And I'm not going back there. And it's going to be world-class. So, be a city action. You have to do something. Can't sit down about it. Can't be port sitters. Provide quality service and physically responsible demand. Integrate the trending and progressive technology to benefit the community and commerce and commercial value. So you foster and inform and engage community. That's you all. That's why we're doing this today. That's why we have meetings all the time in different areas so that you all inform and they talk to you truthfully, timely, and a two-way communication. Develop a roadmap for the city. Most important, where are you going? This place won't look like this way next month, next year, or the year after. But somebody has to have the vision to say, oh, I know what this is, and I know what it needs to happen. Most important, build a brand that promotes and reflects the vision. A brand. Because when people say Stonecrest now, from it, they will tell you, I have done a radio, radio station interview in every corner of the world. Germany, from, from, uh, from Italy, from Canada. They, I can barely understand what they're saying. <laughs> Even the ones that competed against us wanted to know what makes this Stonecrest so different. It's people, it's mayor, and it's council. And how we react to business is what's making us different. And that's what's going to make us world class. You know, oh, baby, my favorite subject? It's Laos. Mars Day, yes, yes, yes. All three went. <laughs> and time. Here's my guy. Executive relationship, folks, is everything. It is everything. We are getting what we need out of the county because our collective relationship with this man. Period. Otherwise, if they didn't like you, they didn't want to talk to you, they don't want to meet with you, you got a problem. You have a problem. That's why relationships in this where we are, especially at the executive level, is paramount. Paramount. You have to have. So work with the campaign, $47 million of infrastructure. To Stonecrest. Not outside of Stonecrest. Not one inch outside of Stonecrest. All Stonecrest. This is the part you can appreciate. We don't have to wait on the check from him. We get the check directly from the state. They give us the check. And then we decide how the priorities and what we're going to do. And it's for six years. How about that? So here's the project. Comprehensive print, uh, uh, improvement design, got to have a plan uh, with regards to uh, uh, where your transportation is going. So let me put a pause on that one second because I want to tell you something else that your full time mayor is doing. I'm the representative for Marta for this area. I sit on the council now. They said, let's go get the Stonecrest guy. That's who we need to, that's, that's, that's the guy that we need to talk to. Otherwise, we was buried under the dirt, never to be heard from again. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to say it. All they're talking about is Atlanta. Let's go to Atlanta and Emory. We're going to do everything here in Emory. Get all this stuff over here in Emory. What about Stonecrest? What about us? Why are we not as important? Until I put Mr. Cuffs with them. Now you can have representation for Mark. Now what they're saying is, wow, Southeast of Cab now is in first place instead of last place to get heavy rail or BRT. That's the position we want to be in. Because I don't know about you, but I know myself, Jim, and some other people, we've been paying that penny for 
three decades. It's our turn. But somebody has to be the person that stands out front to make it happen. Resurfacing the street pavement, all the way, 10 million dollars. Transportation improvements, our parks and recreation. Myself, <coughs> Mr. Jordan. I see Mr. Demetrius in the office here. How you doing, Mr. Demetrius? He's uh, from uh, 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 Commissioner Johnson's office. We went out to uh, uh, Southeast Park the other day uh, to assess what those particular parks look like, what we need to do, what needs to happen with regards to our partnership with the county. We got money now to be able to do something other than just move our lips and wonder what's going to happen with us. You know, one of the key things that made us successful for Stonecrest for all of you all is that we did not have an adversarial position with the county. Never. They were always our partners. Always our partners. And they're still partners. Some of the northern cities that didn't win, that was their, that was their biggest problem. They had an adversary position with the county. The county still delivers services that are great in some areas. But we're going to be delivering these services that we're going to make great. Capital improvement for uh, public private partnership, I mean, a public safety. That might be a public private partnership. We're going to do some things different with regards to taking our money, combining it with some other folks' money with regards to facilities, making sure we have an educated uh, piece of it that all the citizens win on with regards to public safety and construction and program management costs. This is the piece that people were, 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 were choking on. Who are we going to give $3.8 million to? Nobody. <laughs> That's what it costs to administer what needs to happen in this area in regards to where we're going. But folks get caught up in the numbers and there we go. Now, that boils us down to the Charter Amendment Review. Why? Why are we doing these things? And the how to get to where we're going. Turn that from my friend Daryl. Realign the charter to the city's vision. We're not working on the same premise anymore. We're working on the premise of growth. We're working on the premise of executive engagement. We're working on the premise that we're going to be a world-class city. So you adjust the charter for revised <coughs> assumptions on those ends. And you correct the charter based on new information, not yesterday's information, not complaining information, real-time information. Amendment number one, amend the voting power of the mayor from voting, which I vote today, to a non-voting except in the event of a tie. So what does that mean to you guys? We're separating church and state. That's what this is, an executive branch and a legislative branch. Council is a legislative branch. Mayor, executive branch. So with that, I lose my opportunity to vote. <coughs> because they can vote. Unless there's a tie, somebody didn't come. And then, I can vote at that time. So you separate the executive um, and the legislative branch that we just talked about. I only vote at a tie. And this institute checks and balances between the branches and the city. My focus is administrative. Their focus is legislative. And if you're growing, like I know we are going to grow, and as I believe you all know we're going to grow, this has to happen in that area. Amendment number two. Grant the mayor the power to veto certain ordinance, ordinances. As council has told me, it's about checks and balances. So in a veto situation, the institute, the checks and balances between the executive and the legislative branches of the city, and override of the mayor veto requires a supermajority of the city council vote. And the mayor cannot veto an ordinance in which he or she voted to break a tie. Simply put, if they if they um, vote three two on something that I don't like, I get five days to come back and say, "Okay, I'm going to veto that." But then they can override my veto with a four one. They still in control. So the issue of veto, there really has to be something really really serious that we didn't talk about uh, that I really don't see happening, but. Veto is a part of it. And the same thing on the administrative side. Let me give you an example. When I, when I make a selection for our key uh, personnel, when I meet at the city management level, I have to get their vote. Do I like that? Not in particular. But it's checks and balance. Same way with the veto. It's give and take with regards to where you are. But I'm okay with that. Number three. Ensure
sure all council members have a level of maturity that will enable them to legally conduct the fair of the city. You're going to be mad about this. But once you clean up your room and take out the trash, then you can run for city council. There's a certain age, there's a certain thing that you have to be in a new city to make a real difference. And for those of you that have millennial children, you have to know what I'm talking about. You have to know this. So there's a state law that was already there that didn't get enacted, is you have to be 21 years old. That's not unreasonable to run for office. 21 years old, and that was sufficient. And the people that ran before, they'll be older than that anyway when it's time to run again, so I mean, it is what it is. But you need to be clear on where you were going so there wouldn't be any confusion with regards to where you are. Number four, establish the office of Chief Operating Officer. Folks, we just spent an hour and a half showing you where we're going, what needs to happen, where we came from, and now we're growing. You have to add an executive when you grow. So when you all decide, uh, those of you that, you that you've been in the business at this level before, I believe you say that. But you add an executive level to enhance the city operations by managing the new public works. Oh, by the way, footnote, by law, we have to take on public works. They voted for that last session. So we just can't sit and wait on it. We have to do something about it as we sit. And public safety departments for the city. Budgetary oversight still remains with the head guy, who is the city manager. The immediate responsibility for the management and oversight of the SPLOS program for the city. You have to have a person, an executive, that is focused on that. And so budgetary-wise, what, we, what uh, we are proposing is that we will eliminate the assistant city manager position and replace it with a chief operating officer position. And for those of you that have called on executives before, and for those of you that have not, your title is everything. So you can get some business done. I mean, it is simply put that way. Presidents talk to presidents. CEOs talk to CEOs. COOs talk to COOs. And look at the Americans, I'm getting back. That comes with it. Because these are the things that people want to see. And it's an operating necessity because we are growing. We're going from a $9 million budget to a $16.5 million budget, and you don't do it with the same people. And you cannot. Number five, the big elephant in the room. Set the annual salary of the mayor from $20,000, which is part-time, to $85,000, which is full-time. Now, <coughs> when we set this city up in the legislature, this was already here. Period. We had to make a decision whether or not if we were going to stay at this level. So let me give you the story since I was sitting there. This is what's going to happen to you, Mr. Larry. You're going to do, you're going to drop this salary back to 20. Because that's where John's Creek is. That's where Dunwood is. That's where these old people. We don't care how much work y'all got to do down there. That's choice number one. Or, no city. Take your pick. They didn't know I was going to be mayor or not. It didn't matter. All that mattered to them is a note was telling us what to do again. So I sucked it up. Hoping that, that things would work out as they would. Because I knew what it would take to be the mayor of a new town working 24-7. But that was okay. I'm okay with that. <coughs> so we dropped it down. And put it on the amendment. You all, the citizens, pass the town 60% for it, 40% uh, for not. And then I said, if I win, if I'm fortunate enough to be the mayor, then I'll come back and deal with that at the time. Now it's time to deal with it. And that's where we are. Um, so that answers the, the what and then the why with regards to where we are. Original charter and Senate Bill 208 provided for a full compensated mayor. Not a part-time mayor. A full-time mayor with full-time money. And if you're comparing money, Rockdale, 120. DeKalb County, 155. Cobb County, 145. Clayton County, uh, 130.
So you have these executives that are making far more than 85 because they have some more responsibility with regards to firing and some other things. But please, folks, please. Thank you. With regards to where you're going, forget it's Jason Larry. I might get hit by a truck tomorrow. It's the office of the mayor. It's the executive office and where you are going to be in the future. Don't get caught up so much on the person. As Tom told me one day, you're not going to be the mayor forever. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably true. However, the office dictates an executive person. Now I'm going to sit back and I'm not in office. I don't want my mayor taking his smock off. Going to meet somebody running the city hall. I don't want my mayor selling insurance at the time and can't make an appointment because you're paying him 29 cents per person and lives in Stone Grass. It's ridiculous. Full-time mayor, full-time compensation. That's where this is. The city of Stone Grass. Great place to live, work, play, worship, shop, educate. Here's the things that I hear. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. We're here. You know it was 20000 when you ran. It was not. It was more than that before it was supposed to be. The people that have stood this city up made the sacrifice so it could happen. <coughs> What's happening, folks, is this. <coughs> the face of education is changing. The face of service, political service, is changing. Retail. It's changing. The internet is changing. Things change. So when people look at a scale and say, well, look, I see, uh, well, the number guy makes 40, uh, smart guy makes 45. What do you mean with 85? <laughs> they don't do what I do. They don't do what the position of mayor does for a new city coming off the ground working 24-7. They don't do that. So you can't compare me to them unless you're going to compare me to a new city that's in a new area that needs new business to survive. And just one squash and having to manage executives and oversee the people that we're contracting with, which is the H2M. I'll bring you to that subject while we're on it. That is a great company, period. They have great people working for them. We selected them out of a pool of folks, which was only two because how many companies could stand up the payroll of a city with 20 people? There is no African American city that's out there or a company that does that. <coughs> to be able to select from a group of folks that could do so. And they've done a great job at it, as a matter of fact. What we need to decide and continue in the future is how much of their services we'll be using versus some extra services or lesser services. But as far as I'm concerned, they are a great company and they have done exactly what they said they were going to do. They stood up the city with us, they paid the payroll, uh, they have excellent talent that they've uh, uh, provided for us, and they've done exactly what they said they were going to do. And you can't ask anything else other than that. So when people say, well, you're paying them $16 million? Over five years. This year is $1.7 million. Next year, Michael, 2.3? 2.9. 2.9? And then it rolls from there. Depends on payroll, depends on function, depends on the things that we're having. But look at what we have now. We get a chance to stand up public safety in Stonecrest two years earlier. We get an opportunity to participate with Parks and Rec on our terms. We get a chance to capitalize the things that we want earlier than we would ever before. So those are the things you have to look at. <laughs> My fellow citizens, <laughs> we are unlike anybody else. We are unlike anybody else you have ever seen. We are unlike anybody else you have ever experienced before. It is new. It is exciting. 
we have an opportunity to show the world that a majority African American city can make it do what it do at the highest level. We can do that. And that doesn't mean that we're prejudiced. That doesn't mean that I don't love Tom and Bernie. It has nothing to do with that. They know they, they, they know they my guys. <laughs> they do. But what it means is that when they look on the news, one of us are in handcuffs. Our pants are down. Or it's ridiculous. Or we're in jail. That is not going to happen. You can stop that right now. So I go back to my original statement. Now I'm going to retract something. The porch is okay. Just don't be in my way. Go sit on the porch. It's all good. But this is what we call the Renaissance. This is where we're taking the next plateau to where we are. Because even as we speak, radio stations and television stations in Seattle, Washington are talking about us as we sit. What is Mr. Bezos going to do with this Atlanta piece? Not if they come here. When they come here, they pay us some attention. We'll put our brand on the map. I made no apologies for my excitement. I made no apologies for where I think we're going because you all voted me in. And this is what you did. And I think we're doing okay with where we are. Uh, I admit it when I say we have the greatest council in the world. We have to do things that are fast. We have to make big decisions quick. And while people are screaming, throwing rocks and crying, complaining, you know, the same folks that was crying and complaining and throwing rocks with the cab County. Kevin about that. Keep doing it. Watch it go one year with me and out the other. Because we have somewhere that we have to go. And we have to get there. And if, if, if I let, you know, just a few people who didn't want Stone Press to start with, stop the progress, then I'm stupid. And I am far from stupid. We are going to achieve the numbers that we say we are going to achieve. We're going to put in place the things that we say we're going to put in place. We're going to keep our word with the folks that we said that we would keep our word with. And the only thing you all have to do is to give us an opportunity to achieve. That's it. Only thing we ask is give us an opportunity to achieve. Last note, I'll let you all know. There are two factors that determine how Stone Crest goes. And you can take this for whatever you want to take it for. Whatever happens to your mayor happens to you all. Guarantee it. I hit the ground, I hit the ground in a hundred thousand hours with some nonsense. They look, they look at all of us. So what happened to this guy? <laughs> what happened to this situation? They were in such a role, they were doing some things. First thing. Second thing. And I want you to look at this demographically. How goes the black woman in this town? Gold stone press. If you all, as women, stand up with us, the few men that are here, that are trying to get something done, our achievement is unlimited. Period. <laughs> On the same token, if you all decide to collectively take us to the ground, we're going to hit the ground we're going to hit the ground hard. Period. It's not enough of me and Jimmy and George and Rob. And, 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 and players and Michael to stand us up by ourselves. We can't do it. We have to have you all supporting us. There's no good reason to be kicking us. No Have a good day. We want to talk. See me outside. I'll be there.